Somewhere in small town Alberta, a group of people came together and made a decision about their future, their destiny, without relying on government and without leaving it to large corporations to make the decision for them. This is the amazing story we find in Olds, where a community got together and decided that they're going to build the fastest internet in Canada. And with that, they're changing the world. Come with us, we'd like to show you exactly what they've done. If on Monday morning, we were gonna do one thing in this community to make it grow, to sort of future-proof it against something, what would it be? The plan was to build a dark fiber network. We are bucking the trend in that in the rest of the world, big businesses are taking over the internet sales world and small businesses are dropping down. Here, our small businesses are outperforming the bigger guys. Most small communities, grow from within. So they have more capacity, they can hire more people, they can sell more product, and the cycle continues. Theory is that if you create a dollar, the dollar will go around seven times before it leaves the community. So the why, you know, the simple answer is more bandwidth. This out-migration from rural to urban was becoming quite critical. Yes, it has brought new businesses, there's no question. But outside of old, I have a list as long as my arm of communities that come and talk to us and come and visit us and how did you build this? We estimate that phone bills and internet bills in Oles for businesses are about 300,000 less a year than they used to be. It's a thousand megabits per second or, or gigabit. It's the pinnacle of how we evaluate internet right now. And the only comparable out there is Google Fiber in the States. And they actually sent out emails about us when we launched saying, hey, this is a, another guy in Canada that's doing what we're doing in a town of 8,000 people. It's taking control of your future. You have this infrastructure that you own. You're not being looked after from an incumbent that has shareholders that has to make 7% you know, profits. No taxpayer dollars have gone into this. It's self-sustaining. As we make money, it's gonna pay off the network, then we're gonna own the network. And it's just a repeatable model in tons of different communities. And for the big guys, they could do it, but they've already spent money on the ground on their old stuff, and they're trying to get as much money out of it before they replace it. Communities, cities are starting to see that this shouldn't be a privately owned by a company piece of infrastructure. It should be the same as sewer and gas. But we're the, at the cusp of that, that shift of ch trying to change how we view this and everybody else is still on that old thinking. The question is, are they gonna move in here? Are they gonna squeeze you, you out of this? We're squeezing them out. So in here we have our central office. It's all of our systems. So on this side we have co-location that we can rent out. And then over here we have all of our satellites. Right over here, these, we got chiller units. So that's the sound. And then along here is all of our satellite receivers that we bring in our TV from. And we're about to switch over to bringing it in over fiber. Right here is really the core of the network. This is all the fiber optic switching technology. So this little purple box, this big, runs everything. With your Chamber of Commerce hat on, mm -hmm. own its community initiative. Yes. Um, that, that's a good thing. Absolutely. For us, internet is everything. I mean, everything we have is either cloud-based for ourselves. People are quite amazed because you tend to think of Olds as a sort of sleepy agricultural tank town if you're not careful. You, you do talk to other chambers and other towns and they always say, you got the, you, you're the guys with that internet, aren't you? So yeah, it does work. Centennial Village, the college built a new residence. We put an ONT or a fiber connection to every single dorm room. So there's gigabit to the bed. Every, every student has access to a gigabit internet connection under their desk. What the heck are they going to do with all of that? Anything they want. <laughs> it's improved our data transfer considerably. We love it. Actually, I think we even have some older people that come in here and set up their little office. Nothing's faster than fiber. It's cost us, I believe, about $70 a month less than when we were to tell us. You know, if I sat down with my grandfather when they were introducing electricity, his response was, would have been, well, I have candles, 
So why do I need electricity? Our goal was that everybody would have enough bandwidth. So enough, of course, is that you never notice. It just is, you don't even think about it. So that maybe they will actually stretch their imagination a little bit as to what would I do with this excess capacity. You get one or two phone calls a week for the past three years from other communities saying, how have you done this? How can we do this? We're definitely gonna go somewhere else. You too can become part of this journey. Come help us, let's celebrate these businesses together. Donate to our site www.forwardthefavor.com and we will bring you more of these exciting programs.